You might know someone like Amanda. She is dependent on large doses of insulin for her diabetes. Her joints are so painful that she can barely walk beyond her garden. Amanda has worked very hard to lose weight in the past. She tried many types of diets and worked with weight management specialists to control her weight. Even though she lost some weight with each new diet and exercise routine, the weight always crept back on and then some. She wanted to lose the weight on her own, but she felt like her body just kept failing her. What Amanda didn't know is losing weight and maintaining weight loss is a lot more complicated than simply eating less and exercising more. Historically, people have believed that body weight is determined by the energy balance equation. If you consume more calories than you burn, you gain weight. If you burn more than you consume, you lose weight. We view obesity as a lifestyle choice, and the cure for it is simple, eat less and exercise more. This assumption may sound logical, but it can be wrong. One theory, called the set point theory, suggests that no matter what you want to weigh, your brain has a certain weight range and body fat level that it works to maintain within the set point range. This means that you don't control your body fat consciously, rather your brain manages it like it does your breathing and heart rate. Your brain receives information through hormone signals from your body fat, muscles, pancreas, liver, GI tract and sensory organs at all times and controls your appetite, digestion, energy balance and metabolism. Once your set point has been elevated, your body works to defend it vigorously. What happens when Amanda starts a diet? She might be able to lose some weight temporarily, but hormone signals from her body change in response to weight loss and tell her brain to increase calorie intake and slow down calorie burn to restore the body fat she's lost. She feels hungrier, and although she doesn't know it, she's also burning calories slower than before. Amanda's body doesn't recognize that her set point is too high and her weight is unhealthy. It only knows to defend her current set point. Think about her system like a house with a broken thermostat. If the thermostat gets set too high, you might be able to cool the house down temporarily by opening a window, but the sensor would detect the temperature change and heat it up again until it reaches the temperature set by the thermostat. This might explain why treating obesity with diet and exercise so often fails to produce the desired results. It's sort of like telling Amanda to open the window to let some cool air in, when the real problem is that she needs a mechanic to fix her thermostat. Okay, so if the set point system prevents us from losing weight, why doesn't it also protect us from gaining weight and developing obesity in the first place? It actually takes a perfect storm to cause an obesity epidemic, changes to the chemical and nutrient content of our food, the so-called Western diet, a decrease in physical activity, increased levels of stress, inadequate and disrupted sleep, and more widespread use of medications that affect metabolism and promote weight gain, all appear to play a role in elevated set points and rising rates of obesity. And Amanda responded to those environmental changes by sending hormonal signals that elevate her set point for body fat. What can you do with the elevated set point? Back to our thermostat analogy. Amanda's room temperature was set too high and she needs to lower her thermostat temperature, or in other words, find a way to lower her set point. She needs to find a way to make her body regulate itself to a new lower weight. One option for Amanda to consider is bariatric surgery. In study after study, it's been shown to currently be the most effective long-term treatment of obesity. So how does bariatric surgery work to help people lose weight and maintain that new lower weight? Most people, even many doctors, think that bariatric surgery works only by restricting food intake or preventing calories from being absorbed. This is true, but there is more to it. Research suggests that certain types of bariatric surgery also affect the signals between the brain and the body and cause decreased appetite, increased feelings of fullness, increased metabolism, and even preferences for healthier food. These surgeries appear to produce signal changes that reset the body weight set point to a new, healthier level and stop the brain from encouraging weight regain in response to dieting. Bariatric surgery may also affect hormones that help to regulate your overall health, which may explain why some types of bariatric surgery can resolve or improve type 2 diabetes. 
So here are three things you can take away from all of this. One, body weight and body fat are highly controlled by a complex system. Two, obesity is a disease where the complex system that controls body fat may malfunction, resulting in a set point that is too high. Three, bariatric surgery may work by changing the signals that control the body fat set point enabling patients to successfully lose weight and keep it off for long term.